Well, now we're going to address a top concern for many homeowners out there, and that is how to take care of their trees, the biggest and most important plants in their gardens and yards during times of drought, stress, and all the stress that we've been seeing this past year with the weird weather we've been experiencing. I'm joined by Sid Morning of the Good Morning Tree Company. And first off, welcome to Central Texas Gardener. Thank you. It's great to be here. Now, uh, Sid, I know that you and a lot of other arborists are out there have been, been getting lots of calls from people talking about early leaf drop and all sorts of signs of stress. What's going on with the trees and how can we intervene to be effective to help them out? Okay, I, I've been talking to Michael M. Breezy of the city of Austin. He's a city arborist. He's a great city ar arborist too. He's got a very hard job. Uh, what we're seeing is we're seeing early leaf drop and that is, as you said, caused by stress. Um, it is not necessarily fatal. Your trees are not necessarily dying out there, okay? Mm -hmm. They've kind of gone into shock from what's going on. This is a vicious drought we're in the middle of. What everybody is suggesting that we do is supplemental watering, which is simply water your trees. Yeah, and you want to do that, you know, and homeowners think, how do I water a big established tree? Now, what I usually tell them to do is get a hose, set it on a dribble, put it out near the drip line of the tree and let it go for a long time. For a long time, because you want a deep, deep, deep watering mm -hmm. and also makes it, the tree roots go deeper mm -hmm. and, and just makes it better for the tree. Another thing you can do is you can fertilize it with an organic fertilizer. You can use a liquid fertilizer, which is injected underground for some, some applications, particularly say trees around a swimming pool or trees mm -hmm. around a, a driveway that don't have a full feeding zone. Another thing you can do is you can put mulch around the trees to help hold the moisture in. Now one thing, do not build up dirt or mulch sure. or flower beds on the base of the tree trunks. The right. worst thing you can do. You know, and when, and when you say mulching around trees, a lot of people, what, they, what they, their first thought is they create a little like donut ring right around the trunk of the tree. Doesn't do much good for Doesn't the uh, do established too much tree. Good. Yeah, you want to take it out of, of much farther than that. Beyond the drip line, really, if you really want to make a difference. Really, the, beyond the drip, drip line is fine. Another thing, with this mulch, uh, if you have a, like a home shredder or a chipper machine, mm -hmm. or, or say a tree company does work and has these chipper machine chips, do not use that because it leaches nutrients out of the soil. You want that black shredded hardwood mulch that's been aged and cured. Mm -hmm. You can buy it in bags, all the garden places have right. it. That's so what you want to you, use. You can, in, you know, in, in my case, I remember when I took down a lot of trees in my property, I kept the chips, but I, I composted them for right. months. That's exactly what you have to do. Right, and then it, they cook down. <laughs> they will half disappear before they're ready to go. It's fascinating to watch them make that mulch. They, right. they spread it out in the field and water it and turn it over and right. it starts smoking in the middle of the day. Right, right. Well, so deep watering, um, supplemental watering, and even in wintertime now, this is something that I've been getting calls on the radio about is, what do I do with my young trees during winter? Now, typically, if a tree was planted, say, last winter, which is a good time to plant typically, right. now I would be telling them, just watch the skies. If it rains, great, don't worry about it. Maybe an occasional watering. But because things have been so dry this year, I think they, pe do folks need to water through People the winter. People need to water through the winter, mm -hmm. okay? And that's just, that's what we have to do to protect these trees. Yeah. This is a very extraordinary time. Yeah, and it, I think especially uh, the young ones. Especially the young ones. Mm -hmm. And one thing to remember, um, if, if you have a weak tree, mm -hmm. Watering it might save it, but it might not. Mm -hmm. Sometimes this is nature's time to take the weak ones away. Right. And uh, if, if you do lose some trees, um, have it done professionally if you can. Be sure they seal everything. You want to seal the stumps after the tree's cut. Uh, or if, remove them, actually, if yeah, you can. Yeah, or, or remove them. Um, and you know, another thing people are, th are going to be thinking about now is replacing with hardy varieties. Exactly. If, and, you, if you do re have to remove your trees, you want to replace them with a native, with a hardy native. Uh, we try to tell people that red oaks are not a good idea because of the oak wilt that's going mm -hmm. around. Mm -hmm. Live oaks are very slow growing, but there's there's a list of 40 trees the city of Austin has that are native, mm -hmm. that don't require a lot of water, that can, can stand up to this drought and these yeah. kind of conditions. I've, you know, for years I've been trying to steer people to the white oak family, things like chinkapin oak, bur oak, um, Mexican live oak or Monterey oak. 
those are trees that uh, I, I've been recommending. What do you think about that list? I think that's a great list, and I think those are all the trees of the future. Mm -hmm. Okay, red oaks are, will go the way of the American elm, which there's very few of those left because of the elm blight, Dutch elm disease, 40 years ago. Mm -hmm. So the four oaks that you mentioned are great. White oaks are beautiful trees. Yeah, uh, I Bur love oaks them. seem to grow a little faster. Mm -hmm. I tell people Monterey oaks are prettier. They yeah. look like a, a beautiful bush sometimes. Yeah, but th those are the trees to plant, and we certainly need to stay away from the red oaks. For the okay, so and, and now is a good time to plant as now well. Now is the time to plant. Mm -hmm. One thing also, uh, it's usually good to have a professional do it. If you want to do it yourself, if you have a rock layer that you're planting in, yeah. shatter that rock layer. Mm -hmm. You can use a one of these really. 10 foot long picks, you need something to break that rock and that gives the tree roots chance to get inside there and, yeah. and, and, and make it. Good advice for a lot of people out there who live in the hill country or any place with a layer of limestone underneath the, sometimes that one inch of soil you've got. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't work. One other thing to look at, and I've, I saw this just last week over on South 5th, uh, we're getting some uh, situations where a large, even live oaks, which normally have great root systems, are starting to lean, okay? And you can see the dirt is right. built up behind You get a mound them. on one side. If that's happening, your tree is probably getting ready to fall and mm. you probably need to address it. Sometimes you can take weight off that side and you know, sometimes mm. brace it, usually bracing trees is not a great idea. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work that well because they're too powerful. Removing the weight does make a difference. Exactly. Uh, and, but if, it, if it's actually pulling up, uh, sometimes it's time to, to get proactive and get it out of there before it let's, hurts something. Let's talk about oak wilt. Um, always a concern. Yeah. Um, and when is it worthwhile for somebody to intervene? There is a treatment that's available. When should people do that? There is a treatment. It's Alamo 2. It's the best thing we've got. It's not the, you know, it's not perfect, but it's the best thing we've got. And it's and, really a preventative, isn't right. it? Right. It is a prophylactic, as I call it. And people ask me, uh, is it worth the cost of treating my oak trees? Well, treating your oak trees is cheaper than removing them, and if you don't treat them, you're probably going to be removing them. Okay, now let's give people some guidelines about when they should treat and, and, and really, what, realistically, what the cost is. Now, okay. before we started talking, I gave you a for instance. Say I have a beautiful oak tree in my front yard. It's about 12-inch uh, caliber and uh, oak wilt's coming into my neighborhood. Okay, first of all, the time frame for treating oak trees is when oak wilt is about a block away. If you've got oak wilt, you know, a half mile or a mile away, oh my God, it's up here in Terrytown, it's in the neighborhood, don't waste your time and your money by treating your trees then. You wait till it's a block away because this is spreading underground through the root system. Primarily, yeah. Primarily. Uh, the, the cost of treating oak trees, uh, you look at 250 to 300 dollars for an average size oak tree. Removing them is probably twice that, so it's yeah. it's a good deal, and you get to keep your trees. Okay, so uh, this is something that people sh that it definitely should be looking into if uh, if if it's close by. If it's close by, one other thing. Um, it's really important if you treat these trees, and, and there's kits for people to do it at home, mm -hmm. and there's homeowners associations that, that have these uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, kits that, that you use to treat them. You must treat them in the primary roots. Early on, the you know the guys were, were trying to treat them by just yeah, <laughs> right, injecting right. them I into the trunk of the tree. I remember seeing it. Right, yeah. and that absolutely does not work. You might as well not do it at all. Okay, so it has to be, in, in, okay, now. There was another bit of advice you gave me before the interview, and this is, you know, Austin, we often get these storms that move through the city, right. and it'll tear up as it did, like central Austin this year, we had a wind shear come through and destroy a lot of gorgeous right. trees in Terrytown and right. central Austin, and you had, a, actually what I thought was a great word of advice for people, when, when you had that kind of circumstance and there's a freak of nature storm and you have all this damage, what's the best advice that you can give? <laughs> What I told them on, on a news program during that storm, they asked me, what's the thing you have to fear most from these storms? And I said, guys without jobs with chainsaws yeah. calling themselves a tree company. Because yeah. a lot of times they will do way more damage than the storm. So yeah. for God's sakes, just use one of our good local tree companies. There's some good ones here. Right. And, uh, and really be careful of these fly-by-night okay. guys. One other thing, you probably real heard it. Real briefly. Real briefly. 
Never pay up front for tree work. Okay. 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 Thank you so much for letting me be okay, here. Okay. No, it, it's our pleasure. And we have just enough time to plug that the, the, there's a city uh, oak wilt suppression guide that right. uh, has information. We'll have that telephone number uh, available for our viewers online and uh, probably on the show itself. Right. If people want more information about Oak Wilt, they can do that. There we go. All right. Well, thanks so much for being here. Thank you. Okay. Good luck. And uh, coming up next, it's Skip Richter. All right.